in this problem, uh, problem 1.5, we are given a wave function this time with an actual time dependence. So psi of x comma t is equivalent to a e to the negative lambda mag x times e to the negative i omega t, where a lambda and omega are all positive real constants. So this is different from 1.4 in that uh, 1.4 uh, was only defined at t equals zero, whereas this function has time dependence, so it is defined for all of time. Uh, now, hopefully, uh, you remember from section 1.4 that uh, wave functions retain normalization over time. So as it turns out, we actually don't have to worry about the fact that there is a time independence because if this truly is a physically realizable wave function, uh, the time dependence will cancel out the moment we take the mag squared of our wave function. So uh, let's start right away with part A, which wants us to normalize psi. So evidently the equation for normalization is that we have to enforce that the integral over all of space, which in one dimension is just from negative infinity to positive infinity of dx, of the magnitude of our wave function psi squared has to equal one. And we should be able to see right away that the time dependence sort of cancels itself out. And what I mean by that is that psi is equivalent to a complex number z, and what happens is that if we take the magnitude of a complex number z squared, uh, what this is actually equal to is the complex conjugate z star multiplied by z. So uh, we can try this, and this sort of equals the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of, that is a very bad infinity, positive infinity, and then a is real, so the complex conjugate just equals the real component, the real, the normal version. So we get a squared at the front. Uh, e to the negative lambda mag x is also a real term, so it simply squares itself. So this becomes e to the negative two lambda mag x. And uh, finally, we have the actual imaginary term, e to the negative i omega t. So we start off with the norm term itself, e to the negative i omega t. And then we multiply by the complex conjugate, which is e to the positive i omega t, because of the fact that under a complex conjugate, all of the imaginary terms switch signs, and this is all over dx. And hopefully, uh, it becomes evidently clear that these two terms simply just cancel out to one, and we no longer have to worry about it, leaving us with the following expression, where we bring our a squared out of our integral. e to the negative 2 lambda magnitude of x dx. And this is a relatively simple integral to solve. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can enforce the fact that this is an even function. So instead of doing an integral from negative infinity to infinity, we can simply attach a 2 at the front. So 2a squared equals the integral from 0 to infinity. And now that we're doing that, since x is always going to be positive, we can just simply take out the magnitude sign. So this becomes 2 lambda x dx. And I'm not going to waste time going through this integral, but this must equal 1. And when we plug this in, what we get is that a has to equal the square root of lambda. In part b, what we want to do now is to determine the expectation values of x and x squared. So uh, as we already know, the expectation value of any term uh, is just going to be us attaching that term into our integral. So uh, for part b, we'll start right away with the, just the expectation value of x, and we know that this must equal the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x inserted into our mag integral of magnitude psi squared dx. So we sort of already have uh, our expression here for mag psi squared. It's a squared integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative 2 lambda mag x dx. So we can sort of just copy paste that and add an x into it. So we'll do that right now. So this equals this, but with an extra x term right in the middle, right inside here. And 
uh, if you're mathematically savvy with this, uh, you actually don't have to solve this integral at all uh, because you could recognize that there are sort of uh, two components to this. There is uh, an even expression here in the form of e to the negative two lambda mag x, and then there's an odd expression here in the form of x. And what we know is that an even, oops, let me switch to black. We know that an even function multiplied by an odd function is zero, or not zero, is odd. Let's just move this here. So uh, what this tells us is that this is effectively equal to a squared times the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of some function f of x dx, and we know that f of x is odd. And as it turns out, if we integrate any odd function from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh, that is always going to be equal to zero, because uh, odd functions are anti-symmetric about the y-axis. Uh, so for every positive value, uh, for or for every value in the positive axis, there is a equal and opposite value in the negative axis. So because of this, uh, this integral must equal zero. Now let's move right on along to the expectation value of x squared. And here we can sort of do the exact same thing as before and say that we can attach, because we already know what the normal form is, and we attach our x squared term right here. Now this actually is an even function, so we can't use the same trick as we did before, but this is still a relatively simple integral because we do the same thing. Uh, since it's an even function, we attach a two at the front, so two a squared uh, times the integral from zero to positive infinity of x squared e to the negative two lambda, now removing the magnitude sign over the x, and in this case, this uh, can be just done by using integration by parts twice. Uh, we can set u equal to x squared and dv equal to e to the negative two lambda x dx, and we can simply solve this. Uh, I'm not going to, just for the purpose of saving time, uh, I'm just going to plug it into a calculator and solve it directly that way. Uh, so this ends up equaling one over two lambda squared, where we are imposing that a squared is something that we already solved early on to be square root of lambda, so a squared simply equals lambda, and when that gets plugged in to this expression, we get 1 over 2 lambda squared. Let's actually also box the 0 for the similar term up here. Part C is a bit of a sort of a, a big chunk of text with a bunch of stuff that it wants us to do, so let's sort of take it apart and slowly work through it 1.1. So uh, let's just look at the fir first sentence of this problem. Uh, find the standard deviation of x. Now that is very easy. Uh, we sort of already know how to do that. Uh, so let's sort of do that right now. We already know that standard deviation is equivalent to the square root of the expectation value of x squared subtracted by the expectation value of x itself squared. Now we know that the second term here is just zero from part B, and we know the first term is one over two lambda squared, which we defined right here. So we're just going to set that. So this equals the square root of one over two lambda squared. And this of course just equals one over lambda root two. So this is sort of our first answer. Now, uh, next part, part C, we want to sketch the graph of mag size squared as a function of x. So let's do that first before we do any of the other stuff down here. So sketch the graph of mag size squared as a function of x. Well, we have our function. Uh, we have mag size squared equals a squared e to the negative two lambda mag squared, which we defined earlier. Uh, we also know that a equals the square root of lambda. So if we plug that in, this simply equals lambda times e to the negative two lambda magnitude x. Now we could right away sort of graph this just by plugging it into Desmos, uh, but 
However, uh, we can also sort of look at it and get a general idea of what the graph is supposed to look like just from this, because we know that lambda is just an arbitrary constant that we don't care about. So uh, in a way, we can sort of say that this is proportional to just e to the negative magnitude of x. So uh, hopefully, uh, you recognize that because of the fact that there is a magnitude sign here, uh, this means that this is an even function. So all we really have to do is find out how this function looks like on the positive x-axis, and from there we can simply make a mirror on the negative. So uh, let's sort of look at what this looks like on the positive x-axis first. So on the positive x-axis, uh, this sort of just becomes e to the negative x, and this is an exponential decay. So if we graph this, on the positive x-axis, our graph would look something like this. And uh, since this is basically the exact same thing on the other end because of the fact that it's even, the full expression e to the negative mag x would look just mirrored on the opposite side and would look something like this. And if we attach sort of these lambda constants, they do not change the overall shape of our graph, it still looks the exact same, only now uh, the points are, or the scaling will be somewhat different. But we don't particularly care about that, so we can just leave it like this. Now then, uh, next we want to mark the points mag x plus uh, standard deviation and, or not mag x, expectation value x plus standard deviation and expectation value x minus standard deviation. Now, we know that the expectation value of x is 0 because we solve for that in part b, so that means it basically wants us to mark the points of the standard deviation. So uh, we can just sort of estimate that, and let's say that, well, this is, this is at 0, so this is where our expectation value of x is, right in the middle here, and let's say that this right here is our standard deviation in the positive, and this is negative. And what we can do now is sort of, we can sort of figure out what the y value for these is. And because it's even, they will both share sort of the same y value. Uh, and uh, we can we can sort of solve that because this is x and this is mag psi squared on the y-axis. And we can find the y value for this at the points sigma and negative sigma. So we know that sigma equals 1 over lambda root 2. So uh, mag psi squared at sigma or at plus or minus sigma because it's symmetrical is equal to lambda times e to the negative 2 times lambda and then we, we replace the mag x term uh, with this expression here so 1 over lambda root 2 the lambdas cancel out so this just becomes lambda e to the negative 2 over root 2. Plug this into a calculator and it gives us roughly 0 0.243 lambda. And this corresponds to sort of the actual y component right here. So this, this is our y component right here and we're going to say that y is roughly equal to 0 0.243 times lambda. And uh, finally, what is the probability that the particle would be found outside of our range? So uh, what we want then is the probability of finding our particle sort of in the region to the left of our standard deviation and to the region to the right of our standard deviation. Now, uh, evidently we can just set up an equation where we can say uh, the integral from negative infinity to negative sigma of mag psi squared dx added with the integral from sigma to positive infinity of mag psi squared dx. However, uh, we will once again sort of take advantage of uh, the fact that this is an even function and we will simply attach a 2 at the front of our first integral from negative infinity to negative sigma of mag psi squared dx and that will simply allow us to sort of not consider the other integral from sigma to positive infinity. So 
uh, if we actually did this, we already know what sigma squared is, or mag sigma squared. So let's just sort of copy paste that here. So we know that this is going to be equal to two times the integral from negative infinity to negative sigma. And we know that negative sigma is just negative one over lambda root two of sigma times e to the negative two lambda mag x dx. And since this is going from negative this to positive, or this is staying in the negative region, uh, it's going to maintain sort of x sort of maintains its positive sign. So we're going to get rid of the negative here and get rid of the magnitude here to sort of cancel that out. And uh, now this is basically our solution. We can plug this into a calculator and this is going to give us about 0 0.2431. And that is the probability of finding our particle outside of our standard deviation range.